Hi guys, it's Mark here from Newbie Prepping. Uh, we're out for another night. Uh, we got Rich also with us tonight. Another night. Another night. First night. Uh, your first night. <laughs> <laughs> and we got young Aaron with us, another member of our team. Uh, so we're out for just one night, I'm afraid. But so we've got uh, already started setting up the camp. Uh, Aaron's got a tent, as he's a lot younger than us, and he ain't got as much flab to keep him warm at night. So he wants to be under a basher, but his mum said no. Uh, I'm in my basher. Well, not in my basher, but under my basher tonight. Uh, that's just behind me here. Uh, and young Rich, uh, he's still waiting for his basher to come through. So still, he's in his uh, tent. So we're in the, in the middle of the forest and uh, it's been raining the best part of the day, so we already thought we'd get things set up first of all. So we've got a, a tarp up just to make sure we've got a bit of shelter just in case it does rain. Uh, young Rich is a... Uh, failing at making a fire as usual. But he's, he's getting now, he's getting now. So he should have the fire started soon. And young Aaron's making a, a, a seat for us. Uh, yeah. So we'll get back to you. We're going to be going through quite a lot of stuff today, and uh, hopefully you're going to enjoy it. So speak to you in a bit. All right, there. Checking in again uh, with uh, our little overnighter here. As you can probably tell, it's already getting uh, a little bit darker. Uh, thankfully, the season that we're in uh, means that it'll stay light for a little bit longer. Um, unfortunately, we won't. Uh, get to make quite as many videos as uh, I wanted to uh, uh, in the evening, but uh, there's always tomorrow morning. I plan on being up bright and early, isn't that right, Mark? Yeah. Um, so we'll uh, be able to make some more videos then. But for right now, uh, we've just got our fire established there. Um, it was a lot harder uh, than it was for me whenever I made my video, um, because I was working with uh, a lot drier uh, would even though uh, Storm Gareth had literally come through uh, at the time of making that video uh, For some reason it's uh, actually drier. Uh, it was actually drier back then um, But no, we've got it uh, pretty much established now um, And uh, uh, Mark's already showed you around um, This uh, this place uh, actually uh, quite a nice little campground because uh, um, as you may not know, uh, Mark is a, uh, a scout leader, and uh, so he has access to all of like the beavers and the scouts' like uh, camping locations. Uh, this being one of them, uh, as you can see, it's already an established area, pretty much. Um, we even have some uh, uh, rudimentary shelters over here, uh, such as this one. Uh, I said to Mark, maybe I would. Uh, uh, jump in one of those tonight, but uh, they are literally made for children, so maybe my head would be protected from the elements, but that would be about it. Anyway, uh, probably just get some more sticks for the fire, uh, some bigger ones, probably uh, uh, just try and... Uh, oh yeah, we'll be chucking logs on. Um, my man Mark here has actually got a sharp axe. Um, how did you sharpen that axe, man? Well, if your axe is already fairly sharp anyway, then obviously just use a sharpening stone. Uh, but if your axe is completely blunt, like which is, I'll say get uh, a grinding stone, uh, a grinder, and then just grind the edge down, and then uh, finish it off with uh, the uh, grinding stone. Hmm. Let's get the extra sharpness. Awesome. See, using the uh, technology there, uh, so something that, uh, even though I'm a total newbie, even still, uh, I know the channel's been alive for a while now, um, but uh, even though I'm a newbie, uh, I still want to do things as, like, as bushcrafty and as, as spartan as possible, you know? Just, uh, so, I would be there for ages just trying to sharpen my axe uh, with my grinding stone, uh, but uh, Mark's, as Mark said earlier, I don't think he said it on camera, but um, uh, he said uh, it's best to use the machine to get like the edge first, so that then you have uh, like a bevel to uh, work with when um, 
you know, uh, sharpening it yourself uh, by hand. Uh, but anyway, so uh, that's uh, stuff about the axes. Uh, it's a little bit of a running joke between us that uh, I have such a blunt axe. And yeah, uh, maybe uh, after we've got some food going, some drink going, uh, we'll check in again, but it'll probably be a lot darker then, so I'll have to turn the lights up on Premiere. Anyway, uh, so from us two, uh, we'll see you again soon. As promised, here we are again, back in the dark. Um, we uh, got our fire established. Just burning, doing a bit of sausages on the coals at the moment, then we're going to start back up. Ah, yeah. Yeah, because uh, we just wanted to cook some food on there and uh, make some coffee and uh, turns out uh, those little one pound Nescafe sachets are actually really nice. And the uh, powdered milk goes down a treat as well because I'm not really that much of a fan of black coffee. But uh, yeah, so um, yeah, uh, like Mark said, uh, once we've uh, uh, finished cooking our sausages, uh, we'll get the fire started again, hopefully be nice and ablaze and... Uh, uh, maybe, maybe we'll come back, but uh, maybe it'll be a bit too dark then, but uh, who knows. But yeah, we'll, maybe we'll see you in a few moments, maybe we'll see you tomorrow. Well, it turns out we've uh, come back in at night. Um, oh my god, I just noticed underneath where I've put my tent is a nice, sharp, protruding uh, uh, root of a tree. I guess I won't be sleeping on that side. Anyway, so we uh, had a bit of trouble uh, getting the fire started. Um, all of the wood around is just way too damp. Um, we uh, gave it a good go and there was a lot of flames coming, but uh, in the end, uh, even though there are still embers going out there um, uh, and it's still quite warm, so put your hands over and... Uh, even though it's midnight, like it was warm enough to actually stay out there and uh, uh, keep chatting and all that, but uh, we wanted to get an early start. Uh, so, I mean, could have been worse. Uh, at least we actually got somewhat of a fire going. Uh, but yeah, um, tomorrow should be the good day where we're actually doing stuff and uh, uh, just doing some bushcrafty sort of stuff. Uh, won't be able to stay out for too long. Because uh, we've got to get back to our wives, but uh, apart from that, uh, it's been a good day. It's been real fun. Um, right, uh, this is me signing off for, for the for the night. So it's morning time. Uh, had a pretty good night. Um, uh, tested out my uh, new uh, sleeping bag. Um, I was actually kind of worried that the uh, sleeping bag would be a bit too uh, cumbersome because it was gigantic uh, whenever it's in its bag. But uh, I think it's definitely necessary. It's a uh, four season sleeping bag. Um, and uh, that means it's very thick and very warm and it kept me warm throughout the night, which was perfect. But anyway, uh, I woke up uh, to discover that uh, uh, Mark had already started work on building a little fence windbreaker. Looks very small on this uh, camera, but it is of uh, quite decent size. Uh, so yeah, uh, going to help out Mark with that. Um, I, I did already gather some wood. Uh, did actually manage to find some uh, dry stuff uh, down the way. Toilet paper there, just in case we need it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to try again to get this fire going um, with this dryer stuff and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get the fire going and uh, I'll help Mark with making this windbreaker. So yeah, we'll check in a bit later.
Who's filming me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. I thought I might just make a point. Uh, these would look like uh, bought Kindlim. It's not. I actually and a fairly dry but old rotten uh, branch which I chopped up uh, a few minutes ago. So I just want to make that point so we're not cheating. <laughs> Not much, I'm about to go get a match. Oh right, okay. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> so all my efforts have gone down the pan. But we shall see. The reason I'm getting a match is uh, because yesterday my fire steel, when we were striking it, it actually broke. Uh, well, I say it broke, it like came out of its little container and uh, the fire steel is only uh, actually about this thin, uh, sorry, uh, like this uh, length, Long. and it's like really thin. And uh, yeah, I'm g I think I'm gonna have to actually put some money into buying a proper fire steel where, uh, like, you can, like, just a thick uh, ferrocene rod, not have the little handle on it, and uh, yeah, just actually put some money into it. I imagine it would light better as well. <laughs> uh, much better than one of those ones from Wish for one pound. I'm not quite but I've actually bought a lot of stuff from there and uh, it's been reliable, but anyway. Right, so, a little windbreaker is getting there, nearly to the right size what we want. Uh, so there you uh, going to be about two and a half foot, three foot one, uh, but it's the start, fire's going, uh, and which is being a lumberjack. So, we're all having fun. And, uh, this is going to be a bit of a bastard to chop down. Are you filming vertical again? What? You... No? Oh, you're not filming vertical, never mind. See, look, <laughs> good cameraman he is. I might be filming upside down, but I'm not filming vertical. <laughs> And young Aaron, young Aaron went off to Subway this morning and just said, bugger you lot, I ain't getting you nothing. Uh, his mum looked after him to make sure we, he got fed, didn't trust us. So, we've been trying out some saws. We've got this uh, hand saw, uh, it's from Lidl, and I've been very impressed with it. It was 2 99 and as you can see it, a little uh, branch saw, and <laughs> it's been really good. Been really impressed with it. Uh, for two ninety nine, you can't go wrong. Uh, and I always thought that doing the prepping side of things, it shouldn't be expensive. So if we could find uh, a, a good, reliable, cheap source of stuff. <sighs> Why not share the information? So there was. They also did some little lock knock, lock knives. Uh, they were pretty good as well. Nice and sharp. Uh, was able to whittle away quite a lot of wood. And yeah. So and they were two ninety nine as well. So you can get a, a branch saw and uh, a lock knife for less than a tenner, and it would do you in a, a time of crisis. Right, so I'm going to get back to the fire, uh, boil up some water, and uh, get back to you soon. So this is what we've got for the windbreaker so far. Uh, we've actually got enough wood for it, but uh, we're just tying it off here first. Just Marcus, yeah, just to keep it tight enough. Uh, Marcus already tied off this part here, but uh, he's going to show us how he did it on this part here. You said ideally this would be done with paracord? Yeah, if you've got paracord, because obviously if you don't want to... Right, this is... I believe it's called a half-inch knot, right? And it's 
you wrap it around twice and where the cord crosses over oops where the cord crosses over you you put your power cord through just loosen it off a little slightly this twine is not the best of things but and it just holds it in place so it means there's not a knot there uh, and so when you want to dismantle it uh, it's all you have to do is unwind it and you're not actually uh, cutting away your paracord so I'm just going to bind this up a little bit just to keep the tension there before I put the last two on then I'll just do the same again at the top oops as I said this is not the best cord to use quick reef nut So, using a bit more than what you would normally do if you've got paracord. And then, uh, if my colleague would just cut this. To be honest. <laughs> then I'm just going to wrap it around the middle. As I said, this is not the best call to use. I was wondering if it would break, you were pulling that quite tightly. So if you've got power cord, this will make a nice, strong uh, lashing uh, to keep the sword in place. But this is only a temporary thing. Uh, we, already got, we might, I might let me explore as carry on building this up. Uh, and we go from there. And then we put the last two on. And then we just do it again uh, to keep the top two in place. And that's our first of uh, a few windbreakers here and starting off the shelter for the scouts. Right, so young witch is going to give this one a go. Oh, okay. Bear in mind, this is my first time doing this sort of knot. You know, the whole newbie prepping thing. Uh, kind of uh, suggests that. Um, where do I want my twine? Yeah, this should, this should do. Gotta make sure it's tied off nice and tight. Maybe even put a little X in there. And then give yourself about, uh, yeah, put that bit back uh, yeah. yeah, and then just feed it through. It's a bit yeah. harder this side. Yeah. Now what what you're doing here is you're just putting more uh, pressure on the actual uh, twine, and just and it just tightens it up. Before you come to the end, you just uh, wind it in and just tie that little bit off. 
So if you've got paracord, it makes it a lot easier, but... It's an, this is only a temporary thing yeah. anyway, like you said. And if you get a bit of wood oh. and wrap it around the actual paracord... That was wrong. <laughs> Oops. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> if you get a bit of wood uh, on your paracord, because it's, it's a lot stronger, you can really put it tight. Uh, so if you had a bit of aesthetic, <laughs> like this sort of size, uh, you can wrap it around the cord and really, oops, wait, uh, wrap it around the cord like this and really pull it. But obviously, this is only twine, so it's not as strong. Stuff that under there. And so, there we go. Oh, not as neat and tidy as the other one, but. Uh, not too bad, I guess. That's our windbreak. We've got a, we'll saw off the ends there before we continue around that side. But uh, yeah, that's there. But I'll do another one, or we'll get the material for the next one, and then uh, we can drive the stakes in and go from there. Yeah. Right, see you in a bit. A little bit more on cordage here. My friend Mark has got what is it? Well, this is a blackberry bush. Okay. It's got all thorns, so you do need to wear gloves. Now, if you've got a rag, which unfortunately I don't have a rag, you would run the rag down, and it, that would get rid of all the thorns. Yeah. Now, it's going to be a lot harder for me to do. It will be hard for me to do this. Right. So from the main stem, you would want to cut. If you cut it into middle, now I'll try and keep this. As, uh, as central as possible. Now, bear in mind these have still got forms on them, but you want to do this without the forms. You'd also use this for making uh, wicker baskets, uh, for collecting berries and stuff. Uh, but you could use this for, definitely for cordage. Right, so now you can see the white inside. Yeah. Now you don't really want the white, so you want to. Now, from what I can remember. Thorn bushes have like two types of bark on them. They have the outer bark, which is what all the thorns are on. And there's the inner bark, which is more green. Once you've got this, so you peel it off. This is why you take the thorns off, because the thorns actually uh, I guess hinder the yeah. uh, stripping of the outer layer. Now, if you've got no forms on now, you can end up with two lots. You'd have the outer bark, yeah, and the, the inner bark, and you get rid of all this, the inner core of it, which is just where the plant gets all its nutrients from, yeah. And then I'm just going to try and do this as a, a bodge job because it's just to, to show you. But you take all that in about uh, all the nutrients of the plant out, and obviously all the forms take get taken off. I apologise if it's a bit overexposed, so all you're seeing is white. 
Uh, unfortunately, my camera will not allow uh, for the true look of it. Right, so now you got pliable cordage. And it's still tough. So just do a little nut, and there's a reef knot. Very good. And as you see, obviously that did pull away, but it will give you a good binding. Obviously, I was rubbing it against each other, but you, that's another good cordage. Get rid of all the insert there. Uh, you can make baskets out of it and do some basic lashings with it. All right, so uh, we're currently uh, on our way back uh, back, out, yeah. uh, back out because uh, we've pretty much finished uh, what we uh, set out to achieve today. Um, uh, we recorded uh, quite a few videos, um, uh, the ones of which uh, I will link uh, in the bottom of this video. Uh, we, we made those videos while we were out today uh, and yesterday. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think we accomplished quite a bit. Uh, we've got quite a uh, decent fire going despite uh, all of the uh, wet wood. And uh, uh, we got uh, the uh, windbreaker going as well. And uh, we uh, even started like, well, uh, uh, Mark and Aaron made uh, an X frame, uh, two X frames uh, in order to make uh, like a workbench to uh, easily yep. saw wood. Um, and we'll show that in the next video yep. as well. So we'll be coming back here, hopefully in, uh week or two we'll be back up here and then uh more videos will come yeah. after that uh, i'll be up here continuing on doing some more windbreakers with the explorers uh and hopefully get that up so we can actually do be more comfortable when we do uh overnight stays here yeah absolutely and uh hopefully then i won't need to bring a tent with me because i really don't fancy having a tent but uh yeah there we go um right uh, thanks very much for watching. Cool. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you again. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.